Well, it's a pleasure to be with you all this morning in the Lord's house. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to 2 Samuel chapter 7 with me? 2 Samuel chapter 7. This morning as we look at the last covenant that we're going to be looking at until we get to Christmas, uh, I want us to look at the Davidic covenant uh, tonight, or this morning, uh, and I want us to to see what what that covenant was to David as we saw with the rest, Uh, and I want us to see uh, the uh, office of Christ as uh, the promised king to us, and uh, I want us to see what that has to uh, bear on our lives. And so if you have your Bibles in 2 Samuel chapter 7, we'll begin reading in verse 8 together. The scripture says, Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. Thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thine own bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever, and I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men, but my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you and we thank you for uh, the promise that you've given to David here. Lord, we thank you that you fulfilled it in Christ Jesus. And we await for the visible coming of his kingdom on the earth. And we pray that you would send it quickly. Lord, we pray that this morning, if there are any lost in our presence or that listen to the message later, that you would draw them to be saved by his grace. Lord, we pray that you would send us as ambassadors for him uh, to expand his kingdom by the preaching of the gospel. And we pray that you would uh, send your Holy Spirit with us to help us in that work this week. Lord, we pray for our missionaries that you would give them the same graces. Lord, give them the things that they need to do your will. Uh, Be with our leaders in this nation. Uh, Help them. Uh, We pray for those that are not with us also this morning, uh, that you would give them comfort and help them to know your love to them. Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, they would uh, continue in Bible study and in prayer. And Lord, in seeking your face in uh, the ways that you've given them to be able to do, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, that you would forgive us and you'd cleanse us. And we ask that you would, again, keep us to the day of Jesus Christ. And it's in his holy name we pray it. Amen. So we've come to the final covenant from the Old Testament uh, that we'll be looking at. I think we can all see the same threads that have run through all of the covenants up until this point. They were all covenants that were delivered by grace. They were all covenants that contained a law. And they are all covenants that are fulfilled by God himself in Jesus Christ. 
And so I just want us to go through this covenant in the same way. First, it was a covenant given by God's grace. David, the king to whom it was made, was a nobody. He was from a small family in the tribe of Judah. He was from a shepherd's family and the youngest of his father's house. In verse 8, Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. He was in the field. He followed the sheep. He kept his father's flock, and he was the youngest in that household. As 1 Samuel 16, 11 tells us, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. God had called him and taken him for himself out of a small situation. He was a nobody. He was undeserving to be made king over the land. And yet God took him and made him king. David also not just a nobody, but a wicked nobody. He was an evil man in his heart. In 2 Samuel 12, 9, Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And this sin David did after the covenant was made with him. He even recognizes this himself in Psalm 51, 3. I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. He knew that he was wicked, undeserving of God's promises to him. Not only this, but as we see that the promise was not just made to David, but to his children after him, his household was just as uh, born into sin as David was. In 2 Samuel 23, verse 3, The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake by me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. But in verse 5, although my house be not so with God. Uh, we know that his household was, uh, was also wicked after him. They did not rule in perfect fear of God. They were not just in their judgments towards men. And yet, we read, he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things, and sure, for this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. The, the Lord still made his promise to David, uh, even knowing all of the flaws of David and all of the flaws of his children after him. In 1 Samuel sixteen twelve, he sent and brought him in, now he was ruddy and with all a, a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. The promise that God would make to him, God made towards him. God promised him in this covenant to give him children, as we read. In verse 12, When thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy own bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He promised to, to give him children to continue his line. He promised that he would give his favor also to David and his children. In verse 14, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. 
for all for, for, for the, the children of David, God would have mercy toward them. He would not chasten them as his enemies. He would not destroy them as his foes, but he would chasten them just like a man chastens his son. He also promised to them that they would not just continue as a family, but that they would flourish. They would be the head of a dynasty. In verse 13, he shall build an house for my name, and I will establish his th kingdom forever. In verse 16, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. They would be the head of a kingdom. They would inherit the kingdom. It would be established forever. It would not fall. And again, in this promise to give them a kingdom, the promise of his favor to have his house with them. He shall build a house for my name. This was the fulfillment of David's desire back in verse 2. See now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. David wanted to build God a house to dwell with him, to have God's presence always with him. And God promised your children will surely build me a house. Your son will build me a house, he says. And so the uh, promise that God gave, the covenant coming to David and, and making this promise to him was gracious. And it was full of good promises that God said he would fulfill. But like all the other covenants, this also comes with a law that if it is obeyed, the covenant promises would be fulfilled, but if not, then they would not be. First, God, uh, God's promise was conditioned that the king who would inherit the throne would be the king who God had chosen. In Deuteronomy 17.15, Thou shalt in any, any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not of thy brethren. It was the king that God would choose. You will in any wise set a king over you, whom the Lord your God shall choose. 1 Samuel 13, 14, Now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. It's also conditioned on keeping the law of God, being obedient to all of the law that Moses had delivered to the people. All of the law of the previous covenants given in uh, Psalm 132 11 the Lord hath sworn in truth unto David he will not turn from it of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne if thy children will keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them their children shall also sit upon thy throne forever more to keep the covenant to keep the testimonies, to keep the law of God was necessary for this promise to be fulfilled towards David's offspring. In Deuteronomy 17, 18, it shall be when he, that is the king that they would sit uh, over them, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, and he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests and Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. He was to, to read the law of God, to know it, and to obey all that it said to him. And this is just importing all that we saw about the covenant made to uh, the children of Israel through Moses. 
uh, that to obey the law is to bring blessing, but to disobey it is to bring cursing and cursing unto death. This is the condition also of the covenant made to David. And also, he would, uh, and his children, would have to be competent to reign over the kingdom that God would give them. In Psalm 2, verse 8, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Earlier we read how it was said to uh, Saul, Thy kingdom shall not continue. And this is why it didn't continue. Because he did not keep the commandment of God. He did not rule well. He did not have dominion over the enemies God set him against. And so Saul's kingdom passed away. His rule and his lineage no longer had the throne. And the same condition was on the sons of David, that they must reign well. They must keep the charge that God had given them well. And so, uh, as we saw, uh, this could not be uh, fulfilled by the descendants of David, at least not the immediate descendants. Humanly speaking, this it cannot be done. There are no perfect human rulers. Uh, David's immediate offspring, only two generations passed, and we already see that uh, trouble was coming up. In, uh, in Psalm 132, or in, in um, rather 1 Kings 11, verse 4, For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that is the son of David, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of David his father. Solomon turned away from God. He was not perfect. He did not keep the statutes of God. He went after false gods after David had died. In 1 Kings 12 verse 14 also David's grandson also sinned. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. Uh, uh, thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. Uh, the sin of Rehoboam uh, was that he didn't keep the kingdom well. And if we continue on and we were to look through uh, the books of the kings, uh, we would see that the, the descendants of David failed. Uh, in every generation, they were imperfect. They were sinners. They were not worthy of the promise that God had made to David. But God still made the promise to David. He still promised he would have children. He promised that, that his children would have God's favor on them. He promised that they would have a kingdom that would not pass away, that God would establish the throne of David, and it would continue forever. In verse 12 of our passage, When thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son." God made this promise unilaterally. He said, I will do this. I will establish. I will be to him a father. He shall be to me a son. And this prophecy is not about every child of David. Not about Solomon or Rehoboam or any of the kings after them. 
but it was about the Christ who would come. Psalm 132, 11 says, The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I sit upon thy throne. God promised in truth, and he will not turn away from it. Just as all of the covenant promises to Adam and Noah and Abraham and Moses, God would fulfill, he will fulfill towards David also. Christ, the Son of God, would be the seed. Psalm 2, verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. As a perfect son, he was obedient to all the law that God gave him to perform. He did not fail as the other sons of David did. Christ also built the temple of the Lord as it was promised to David. Zechariah 6.12 Speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Notice the, uh, the, the divine element to this. It says, even he shall build the temple of the Lord and he shall bear the glory. That is, he shall bear the glory of God. He, as God, bears his own glory, building God's temple among men. In Second Peter, or 1 Peter 2, verse 5, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Christ builds us up as the temple of God. He uh, makes our sacrifices acceptable to God. He bears all the glory of God's house. He, the only begotten Son, the only one to whom it can be said by nature that God is his father. He is his son. He builds the temple and bears the glory of it. He also is the victorious king, ruling his people perfectly. We know uh, that, that man fails to rule. Uh, we all complain often about those who are set to rule over us. If you can find somebody out in the world that uh, doesn't have anything wrong with the, the rulers over them, uh, I'll show you somebody who has a stake in the next election. Uh, but the uh, Christ, uh, as divine, as God himself, as the King of kings and Lord of lords, he can fulfill the requirement to rule well God's people. 2 Samuel 23, 3, God of the God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of the Lord. And he shall be as the light of the morning, when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. This uh, is not just a requirement, but a prophecy that he that uh, would be king uh, must be just ruling in the fear of God and he shall come. He shall spring out of his place. He shall rise as the light. He shall be as the tender grass after the rain. Zechariah 9, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey and upon a colt, 
the foal of a donkey, and I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the, the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have set forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. And the final prophecy we see here about it is that he would represent his people by his own blood. That he would be a king to them, strong, speaking peace to all of their enemies, uh, pushing away the adversary, and yet by the blood of his covenant, he would cause peace between man and God. Uh, just as uh, we read at the beginning, and this is the uh, part that's usually the most difficult to understand in our passage. In verse 14, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, if this is about Christ, Christ doesn't commit iniquity himself. He is perfect. He comes from God and is, uh, is perfect as God. But it says, if he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul for thee. The only way that this can be understood for us is that He bears all of the stripes by his death on the cross. When we sin and are deserving of judgment, God judges him. And yet God's mercy never departs away from him. God would raise him up. God would have mercy to him and thus towards us also. And we would be saved. He comes having salvation in his hand for us. And so, believers, in this covenant we see, uh, as we are approaching the time when we uh, celebrate, as we should celebrate always, but the time we specifically point out our celebration of the coming of this king, I just want us to see that he was foretold plainly coming as a king. And a lot of people don't like that Christ came as a king. And that he's returning as the king of his kingdom. Uh, we like to think about how he is the sacrifice. How he forgives sins. But he comes also to rule his kingdom. And uh, I want us to remember that he has the rule over us as his people also. Not only against our enemies. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 we read, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are the temple of God, built up by the hands of Jesus Christ. You are bought with the price of his blood. You are not your own anymore. You belong to the King of Kings. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies. Do not succumb to those sins that would uh, 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 stop us from glorifying God, from bringing his name, the honor that it's due. He's bought us. He has the rule over us. And so let us go submitting ourselves to his rule this week. And now if there's an unbeliever here this morning, Christ as the king demands allegiance from you this morning. He does not demand that you labor for your salvation. He does not demand your own righteousness, but that you submit to his righteousness that he will give to you. Mark 1.15, Christ says, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. 
The kingdom of God has come. The reign of Jesus Christ. The judge of all the earth. He has come. Therefore, repent and believe the gospel. Psalm 2 verse 12 says, Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. And that because of your sin. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. Kiss the Son that you do not perish. For blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. I pray that this morning you would put your trust in Him. Kiss the Son lest He be angry with you. He has come in mercy and grace, showing grace to as many as have faith in him and so i pray that you would place your trust in him today before it's too late and again believers let's go out of this place knowing who our king is who it is that owns us and who commands us what we ought to do and let's go and do just that this week and let's go to our lord in prayer father god we come before you once again and we thank you for christ but we thank you that you've brought us into the kingdom of him. The Lord, given us a place with him. And the Lord, we pray that you would help us to submit to his rule this week. The Lord, we pray that you would make it plain what we ought to do. Uh, Lord, that you would place a, a circumstance that we can speak the gospel to someone this week. Lord, Lord, we ask that uh, you would give us the courage to uh, follow through on that. The Lord, to take the opportunities given to us. And Lord, we pray that they will be fruitful and that we would see some saved by your Holy Ghost. Lord, we pray that if there be any in here that are lost, that you would draw them. But Lord, we pray that you'd be with our missionaries and our leaders. But Lord, be with those that are not with us this morning. But Lord, you've heard prayers from uh, all of those who have offered them up this morning in this place, uh, that you would be with those that aren't able to make it here. But Lord, we pray that you'd be with them in uh, all of their situations. Uh, Lord, give them comfort and peace in it. Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, uh, that you would forgive us and that you would deliver us from this evil age because uh, yours is the kingdom and in Jesus Christ you have uh, made it plain to us. And it's in his holy name we pray. Amen.